Shabbat Shalom. We are, in the pro, we are in the section of the Apocalypse, the things which will take place hereafter. We're looking at what is going to happen on the earth after the church has been raptured. Last week, we looked at an overview of Revelations chapter 4 and chapter 5, which confirms that the church must be in heaven before Jesus opens the first seal, which brings about the Antichrist. Today we're going to continue with Revelation chapter 4 and looking at the scene of heaven. Revelation 4 verse 2. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one set on the throne. John was not literally taken to heaven but was spiritually translated to heaven. His focus was not on the glories of heaven, but on the one who sat on the throne. Who is sitting on the throne? He is identified as the king. Psalm 10 verse 16 says, The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his hand. The Lord is the king who sits upon the throne. And when we take a look at chapters 4 and 5, we see the identity of the one sitting on the throne is not Jesus, but God the Father. Now this becomes a problem for the United Pentecostals, or Truth Tabernacle, who deny the Trinity. To quote William Branham, it is not that there are three gods, but one God with three titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. How can three persons be in one God? Not only is there no Bible for it, but it shows even a lack of intelligent reasoning. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are just titles. They are not names. That is why we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the name not a title. That's from understanding the Godhead. They teach that Jesus is the one sitting on the throne. But as we go through Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, we will see it's not Jesus sitting on the throne, but God the Father. Revelation 5, 6 and 7. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though have been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. I've actually taken United Pentecostals this passage and pointed out verse 6, and I've asked, who is the Lamb? And they will say, Jesus, which I will agree. Verse 7, Then he came and took the scroll of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When I asked, who is sitting on the throne, they become very concerned. Because here we see Jesus coming and taking the scroll out of God the Father's hand. There's two persons. And to see them try to twist the scriptures to deny it is the Father sitting on the throne and Jesus coming and taking the scroll out of the Father's hand is actually almost humorous if it was not for their eternal security at stake. Now, I also use the following passages, which they have difficulty trying to explain away. Daniel 7.13, which is a parallel passage, says, I was watching in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, you can ask them who that is, and they'll have to say Jesus, Coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. So here's Jesus being brought to the Ancient of Days. Two persons. And they'll try to twist it into saying, well, that's not two persons. But if you take the Bible literally, it is Jesus coming to God the Father. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. And when he, Jesus, had been baptized, Jesus is in the Jordan River, being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not baptized with Jesus. He's coming down from heaven. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There's God the Father. God the Father's in heaven. The Holy Spirit's coming from heaven down to Jesus. And Jesus is in the Jordan River. Three persons. Once again, they can't explain away this verse. They try to avoid it. Isaiah 48, 16. Come near to me and hear this. I have not spoken from I have not spoken in secret. From the beginning, from the time that it was, I was there. And now the Lord God and the Spirit have sent me. There you have the Holy Spirit and God the Father sending Jesus Christ the one who has not spoken in secret, the one who was from the beginning. And in Genesis 19.24, Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Here you have the Lord Jesus in Sodom, and he brings down fire from the Lord out of heaven. Two persons of the Godhead. Revelation 4, verse 3. And he who sat there was like jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. We can appreciate John's dilemma he would have trying to explain, trying to put in words what his eyes had seen in a vision. It would be very difficult for John to explain what he saw. The Apostle Paul put it this way, But as is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 4, and he, How he was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible words which is not lawful for man to utter. So Paul was caught up to heaven but he could not explain what he heard, could not explain what he'd seen. Though we cannot fully comprehend John's vision of heaven, we conclude that heaven is infinitely beautiful. We have a couple of gems described here. Jasper. Jasper on the Smith's Bible Dictionary describes Jasper this way. A precious stone frequently noticed in scripture. It was the last of twelve inserted in the high priest's breastplate, and the first of the twelve used in the foundation of New Jerusalem. Characteristics of the stone, as far as they are specified in scripture, are that it was most precious and like crystals. We may also infer from Revelation 4.3, it was a stone of brilliant and transparent light. The stone which we name Jasper does not accord with the description. There can be no doubt that the diamond will be more adequately answered to the description of the book in the Revelation. This may be a heavenly gem which is not found anywhere on the earth. Sardine or Sardius, red. The stone which occupied the first place in the role of the high priest's breastplate. The sard was probably stone, you know, by its superior variety of agate, sometimes called Erlian, and has long been favored stone for engraver's art. Sards differ in color. There is bright red variety, perhaps a Hebrew from a word which means to be red points to its kind. An emerald, precious stone of green rich color upon which its value chiefly depends. Gem was first in the second row of the breastplate of high priest. It was imported to Tyre from Syria and used as a seal or signet, as an ornament of clothing and bedding. It is spoken of as one of the foundations of Jerusalem. The rainbow around the throne is compared to emerald in Revelation 4 3. Revelation 4 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white robes, 
and they had crowns of gold on their heads. John was focusing upon the Lord, and now his focus turns to the glorified saints. In John 3, 1 to 3, we read about the glorified saints in heaven. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Who are the 24 elders? Well, it seems in context they are speaking about the church in heaven. In Revelation 5, 8 to 10, we read, Now when he had taken the scroll, when Jesus had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe, tongue, and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. They are the redeemed ones, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They come from every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. That's a description of the church. They are kings and priests. There are a lot of Old Testament saints, but none of them were priests and kings. That, alone, that description alone describes the church. And we shall reign on earth. It's talking about their return and reigning with Jesus during the thousand-year kingdom. So they're already in heaven, and they're coming back. Dr. J. Vernon McGee puts it this way, There has been a great deal of speculation as to who those elders are. The Greek word for elders is presbyteros. By the way, the word presbyterian comes from that. And I am reminded of the story about the little girl who came home from her Presbyterian Sunday school and her mother asked her what they had talked about. We talked about heaven, the little girl replied. Well, what did they say about that? Her mother asked. The teacher said there were only 24 Presbyterians there. Seriously, elders were appointed in the early church to rule and to represent the entire church. Look up Titus 1.5. Their role was clearly understood by the people in John's day. These 24 elders stand for the total church, from Pentecost to the rapture. Therefore, I can say categorically and dogmatically that here is the church in heaven. Thank you for joining me. This is Larry Mitchell. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.